Hello and welcome to week 7 and lesson 2 of the NPTEL MOOCs course on development research methods. Uh, poverty and issues surrounding poverty appears uh, frequently in development research uh, analysis. However, the notion surrounding the concept of uh, poverty confounds many uh, researchers uh, including uh, researchers that have uh, moved uh, far ahead in their uh, research work because the notion surrounding poverty are uh, many and uh, therefore, it needs to uh, be very clear with regard to what are the different uh, methods of uh, poverty measurements and uh, analysis. So, in this class we will look at uh, some of the very basic uh, notions surrounding uh, uh, the notion of notion surrounding the concept of poverty and how does one approach uh, poverty or issues surrounding poor people uh, the, the so called poor people when we uh, talk in terms of uh, research methods. So, I have titled this uh, class as poverty measurements and analysis. Uh, which is mostly looking at the applications of uh, these notions of poverty and how they can enter into the field of development uh, research methods. So, what we will cover in today's class is as follows, we will first look at what are the different approaches to poverty, uh, then we will also look at some of the different poverty measures and finally, end today's lesson with uh, the uh, ideas of multidimensional deprivation and multidimensional poverty index. So, I was as I was mentioning in the beginning that uh, the notions surrounding uh, poverty confounds many uh, researchers and uh, therefore, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the perceptions of the researchers themselves regarding how they want to approach the concept of poverty is also extremely important. Uh, there are uh, uh, the different people have different notions of poverty, there are subjective perceptions with regard to who is poor, who is not poor. However, when we come to policy analysis, particularly development policy analysis, there are certain set ways in which uh, we uh, approach the notion of poverty and there are uh, many an international guidelines uh, that we follow with regard to uh, what do we mean by, uh, by, by the poorer sections of population or poverty. Many of you must have come across the notion of income poverty lines. For example, uh, when we say that uh, uh, with respect to the developing countries, when we say how many, uh, what is the proportion of population that is facing a situation of poverty, often we use uh, the, uh, the, the a threshold of people who are surviving uh, below uh, 1 dollar a day or 2 dollars a day. Uh, so, effectively what we, are try, what we are doing when we are referring to a threshold of 1 dollar a day or 2 dollars a day is we are talking about uh, some kind of an income poverty, uh, absolute level of poverty where we are trying to count the total number of poor people by a given minimum. So, these are the kind of things that we will be looking up in uh, today's lesson. Let us begin with understanding the different approaches to uh, poverty. Now, uh, from a social researcher's uh, point of view, poverty is a complex phenomenon which is influenced by a large number of factors and which can be studied from many different perspectives. And uh, the study and interpretation of poverty is not really a simple uh, task as there are many ways of measuring poverty as there are ways of defining it. Now, depending on the point of view adopted uh, and the aspects that uh, need to be uh, highlighted, different poverty analysis can be carried out. And within the huge variety of possible studies, the first classification refers to the type of base information used and which can be termed uh, basically objective and subjective uh, uh, poverty. Likewise, depending upon the scale or reference used, we refer to absolute and relative uh, poverty. Um, and we can uh, finally, it is also important to distinguish uh, the static studies from the dynamic studies. And dynamic studies basically include an essential dimension which is the length of duration of poverty. So, in this way a difference arises between transversal poverty and long term or persistent uh, poverty. From a completely different perspective analysis based uh, mainly on the impossibility of access to certain basic consumption elements are carried out as it is understood that these limitations can result in a lack of social integration and therefore, we refer to multidimensional deprivations. So, to begin with there are these different very, uh, there are very different approaches to poverty as I have just mentioned uh, going by the base of information you have subjective and objective poverty, absolute and relative poverty which usually refers to uh, income poverty or uh, we take sometimes we take expenditures as proxy of income. The duration of poverty is also a matter of uh, big concern uh, 
and also uh, looking at poverty in terms of achievements or looking at poverty in terms of the deprivations that an individual or a group of individuals are facing is also extremely important. So, before we enter into the analysis of uh, poverty or analysis of the conditions of poorer sections of population, it is important to uh, decide beforehand what is the approach that we are taking with respect to studying uh, poverty. Now, uh, information collected uh, when we if we look at objective poverty, objective poverty studies use uh, information collected uh, via variables and whose measurement comes from a researcher's uh, direct observation, which basically gives the researcher a very high degree of objectivity. And the most commonly used variables as I just mentioned are household income and sometimes expenditure. And by applying an objective focus and analysis of both absolute and relative poverty can be carried out. So, let us try to look at what is it that we mean when we say absolute poverty and relative poverty. Many of you may be aware of these, dis uh, these uh, uh, descriptions. However, uh, for a development research method student who has uh, from, uh, way, uh, from disciplines coming from other than development economics or developed in sociology, some of these terms may be very new. Uh, so, therefore, it makes sense to have an overall idea of what, where are we going in terms of uh, these uh, concepts. So, let us look at absolute poverty. Now, absolute poverty is defined as a situation in which the individual's basic needs are not covered or in other words, there is a lack of basic goods and services and this is this normally relates to the very basic uh, needs uh, for example, food, clothing and shelter and uh, often uh, uh, with, uh, with time the list of basic needs also keeps on expanding. However, some of these issues related to housing or electricity, sanitation and drinking water has remained a constant for over a large period of time. Uh, there is also this concept of poverty is also strongly uh, linked to destitution and can be applied to all countries or all societies. So, when I was referring to the number of poorer uh, people or poorer sections of population living below 1 dollar a day, what we are essentially referring to is absolute poverty and this is something that can apply to all countries or all societies. Uh, so, a person who is considered poor under this criterion is classified in the same way throughout the uh, world. Uh, and a related concept is what is called relative poverty. From the, from, from the perspective of relative poverty, a person is considered poor when they are in a clearly disadvantaged situation either financially or socially with regards to other people in their environment. So, here the focus is mostly on the notion of inequality. Income inequalities between different groups reflect uh, uh, relative poverty and this uh, the classification between poor people and those who are not poor in accordance with this uh, last criterion depends on the degree of development of the society under study and cannot be transferred to a different society. So, for example, when we say one uh, we can consider one country may have poor people. Uh, we, we can categorize the country to be having all poor people if by uh, on the basis of a threshold. Let us say the threshold of, uh, so all those households or uh, families who have an annual income of less than 3000 euros uh, per year may be considered as uh, poorer people in one country, in a country A. Whereas, in a country B, all those uh, depending upon the level of development of that country B, all those families who have income levels below uh, 7000 euros per annum may be considered as uh, uh, poor in those uh, country. So, uh, so, in country B, the person or a family who is being considered poor may not be considered so in country A. Uh, so, this is, uh, so, this is what we mean by relative poverty that the depending upon the stage of development that a country is in, the notion of poverty may also differ because the cutoffs or the thresholds will differ uh, depending upon the levels of development. Uh, so, supposedly uh, a supposedly poor person in the second country may not be classified as a poor uh, person in, uh, in uh, country uh, A. Now, let us move uh, to the concept of sub subjective poverty. Uh, subjective poverty studies are based on the perception that uh, the individual or households themselves have of their situation. So, in this case uh, we uh, usually depend upon information. Uh, on the opinion of the individuals or households and their uh, uh, situation. So, this way of understanding poverty is basically influenced by the subjective view that households have of their uh, situation, financial situation mostly as opposed to the objective view of what policy makers might think of their uh, situation uh, uh, as or for the uh, or the objective focus that only uses observable and measurable uh, variables.
Now, so after being introduced to these uh, concepts of absolute relative poverty and subjective poverty, like a, let us look at some of the issues of measurement of poverty. So, one is we uh, understand that there is a situation of poverty in a certain society or in a certain country and then the next step for us is to go ahead and start measuring the number of people who may be considered as poor and the question to ask is why are we interested in measurement. We are mostly interested in measurement particularly in the field of development research because we are talking about policy interventions here and measurements usually are the first step uh, that goes on to help us to decide what are the different kinds of policies that may be designed uh, keeping the uh, poorer sections of the population in mind. So, uh, we be, it's a, in the objective methodologies the so called poverty lines are used to classify people as poor or as not poor depending on which side of the line of barrier they are placed. The lines are uh, normally expressed using indicator values usually monetary or chosen to measure poverty. Uh, the Indian students might uh, uh, have heard of uh, concepts such as above poverty line and be below poverty line. So, these poverty line concepts uh, basically come from these uh, 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 notions of absolute poverty lines and uh, relative poverty lines. Uh, in the Indian context, income poverty is considered to be the, uh, the uh, criterion for deciding upon uh, uh, upon people who are poorer in our uh, society. So, if we have to come up with a definition of poverty line, these lines basically reflect the value of the resources needed to maintain a minimum level of welfare and they measure the cost involved in purchasing a basket of essential products, usually goods and services which allow a person to reach minimum levels of satisfaction in terms of basic needs. So, when we are referring to basket of essential uh, uh, products here, we are mostly referring to income. So, the measuring the cost involved in purchasing a basket. So, uh, so let us say uh, we decide upon a certain basket um, uh, of uh, goods and commodities, uh, goods uh, that are being uh, consumed by households or families in the form of let us say cereals and vegetables and pulses and so on. So, when we uh, come up with the cost uh, of uh, the food basket and then we compare it with the uh, household income or the family income that helps in purchasing of the food basket, then it helps us determine whether that family is able to access the food basket given the income that uh, the family possesses. So, that essentially gives us a sense of uh, if accessibility is uh, poor because the family does not have the required income to be able to access the basket of goods and services, then we may say that the concerned family is poor. So, it measures the cost involved in purchasing a basket of essential products uh, which allow a person to reach minimum levels of satisfaction in terms of basic needs. Uh, the results that are sensitive to economic development can be obtained from these lines even when changes are homogeneously shared out among uh, the population. And one of these absolute lines that is widely used uh, uh, fixes a dollar per capita a day as the value of minimum resources needed for a person to not be considered in poverty. Now, this line can be used in a world context with the implication therefore, that any person who lives on less than a dollar a day is poor. And this is uh, basically widely used in today's world when we look out for countries uh, where uh, we do a head count of uh, people in different countries particularly in the developing countries of the world where uh, they are living below 1 dollar a day uh, uh, per capita and that gives us a sense of uh, the notion of the incidence of poverty in some of the countries. So, absolute lines are of limited interest in developed countries because and therefore, we say that one of the characteristic features of developing countries is said to be absolute poverty and not relative poverty. In the developed countries of the world, the concept that is most, most used is relative poverty. So, absolute lines are of limited interest in developed countries. In underdeveloped countries or developing countries, they are better accepted and are used to a larger extent. Uh, let us also now look at relative poverty lines. So, these lines classify people in the society under study in two groups, those that are most disadvantaged who are called poor and the rest. So, if there is a homogeneous increase of income in a society, the relative poverty lines provide the same poverty rates before and after this rise. And the poverty threshold will be greater, but the proportion of poor people will remain just the same. And in order for percentages of poor people calculated with this type of line to diminish, it is necessary for there to be changes in uh, income distribution. If the income distribution remains more or less the same, 
uh, relative poverty over a period of time shows similar percentages of people below and above the uh, poverty line. Now, subjective poverty lines are also introduced uh, uh, with respect to when we talk about absolute and relative poverty lines. So, these lines are based on the opinion held by individuals on themselves in relation to society as a whole and this is a concept which has uh, been uh, which has uh, uh, which has been very widely discussed uh, in the domain of human development uh, as well where uh, uh, particularly in the in the underdeveloped countries of the world or even in the developed countries uh, certain levels of deprivation may not be considered as uh, uh, being uh, uh, as uh, as uh, indicating uh, uh, situation of poverty whereas uh, people's perceptions of themselves as being deprived of certain rights or as being deprived of uh, of certain basic needs because of not having access to those rights can also give us a sense of how poor uh, the the situation of poverty that they are in so in this sense subjective poverty is also uh, something which uh, uh, which had been under discussion for a very long time right from the 1960s and the 1970s and it has make uh, made a comeback in a very big way after the human development paradigm uh, shift uh, in the uh, from the 1990s and 2000s onwards so here in this case it is assumed that each individual is the best judge of their own situation and we avoid to a certain extent the opinions of value implicit in the relative poverty measures, choice of threshold, use of equivalence uh, scales, uh, etc. Uh, some of the best known subjective poverty lines have been indicated here and since uh, the purpose of this uh, uh, lesson is not to uh, go into the details of each of the poverty lines, but to familiarize the students uh, with regard to the existence of these concepts. Uh, it is requested that uh, for those interested you may follow up on these subjective poverty lines and get into the, get into the details of uh, these, uh, uh, these lines to have a better understanding of how to approach the notion of poverty if in case you want to take up the issue of uh, poverty with a subjective poverty line uh, lens. Let us move on to the issue of incidence, distribution and intensity of poverty. It is one thing to understand that there is a state of poverty, there is a situation of poverty and also have a lens of understanding the uh, poverty of uh, the situation of poverty in a certain location or among certain sections of population. But when we uh, uh, and therefore uh, to be able to uh, go into measurement, the finalization of a lens of poverty is also important. However, moving further it is also important to look at the incidence, the distribution and the intensity of poverty and uh, today we have a number of indices, number of uh, measures that have been constructed uh, that can be used in different contexts to be able to in different combinations also as well to come up with a good notion of uh, where we are with respect to our poverty analysis and it is important to use a combination of measures and a combination of concepts as it gives us a clearer picture of uh, where we stand in terms of policy interventions. So, let us have a look at uh, some of these uh, issues surrounding incidence, distribution and intensity of poverty. Now, uh, one of the first things when we look at incidence of poverty is that this uh, incidence of poverty can be looked at as a measure which provides us information on the extent of the problem. In other words, they provide data on the quantity of people or households that are affected. Um, in the Indian scenario, for example, the, we often make use of the term called official headcount ratio of poverty. So, this is what we are referring to when we are saying headcount ratio of poverty. When we say that what is the official rate of poverty in India, effectively what we are referring to is what is the incidence of poverty in India, what is the headcount ratio of poverty in India. So, this indicator measures the incidence of poverty with regard to percentage of poor people under a certain threshold uh, within the total population. And it is calculated in such a manner where we count the total number of poor persons depending upon a threshold divided by the total uh, number of uh, people whether poor or not in that uh, in the group within which the poverty rate is being calculated. And the threshold in our case is uh, income. So, in this case uh, we are basically look so, so if we are uh, dividing the entire uh, population of this uh, country into poor and non-poor let us say. So, here the uh, and the this poorer sections of the population basically refers to all those people who are below a certain threshold of income 
and that is and then we find a proportion of uh, those all those below the threshold of income as a part of the total population we are essentially counting the head count we are giving the head count ratio and uh, very often uh, we uh, this poverty rate is called the head count ratio and poverty rates can also be calculated for different population groups according to demographic or socio economic variables sex and age level of education professional situation etc so if we are calculating for example the issue of income poverty in india if we classify the number of poorer people by uh, gender by age by level of education and professional situation we might find a different scenario altogether and often you will see that uh, there is a lot of income poverty among the female gender there is a lot of income poverty among uh, uh, underage population uh, a lot of income poverty among uh, all those people who have not attained uh, at least uh, Uh, secondary level of education or higher education and also the all those people who are not in the formal sector uh, and are found more in the informal sector have a very high incidence of income poverty so therefore looking at uh, income uh, uh, income poverty by different population groups also give us a very uh, good picture of uh, where we are in terms of our uh, analysis and that is where we come into the domain of what is called distribution so essentially what we are doing is we are looking at the distribution of poverty so poverty distribution measures indicate how poor people are distributed and uh, the characteristics that they share these are measures that provide the analysis with descriptive information on a, a group of uh, poor people now uh, within the poverty analysis it is particularly interesting to carry out a study of poor people their characteristics and their living conditions to do this we study the distribution of poor people by age and sex by level of education by their dwelling tenancy regime etc and the distribution of poor people by ages for example would provide information on percentage of people over 65 years among those that are uh, poor uh, calculated as the number of poor people over 65 um years among the number of poor people so the distribution study according to different variables allows us to understand the characteristics of poor people and therefore facilitates the design of more efficient measures in the fight against poverty and uh, this poverty distribution also gives us a sense of the inequality existing within the society which is why poverty and inequality measures usually go hand in hand first we try to get a sense notion of poverty then we look at the incidence of poverty the po distribution of poverty the depth of poverty and that gives us a sense of the levels of inequality existing within a society and then we go on to frame policies and inter uh, interventions that goes that can address the issue of inequality within a society uh, coming from a justice social justice point of view similarly uh, in intensity of poverty is also a measure this uh, measure allows us to understand up to what point poverty affects the population so the focus is on the degree of poverty suffered by people more than the number of individuals considered to be poor and therefore here in the case of intensity of poverty we make use of uh, poverty gaps uh, these poverty gaps are measures that usually measure the intensity of poverty and it is a measure of the distance of individual poor people from the poverty threshold there are uh, other measures related to intensity of poverty that use this measure as a base element and uh, And the first measure is usually called the income gap uh, we look at the what is the uh, income gap uh, we, by dividing the poverty gap among the minimum income poor people would have to have in order to stop being poor and the second measure is called the relative poverty gap which is calculated as the coefficient between the poverty gap and the number of people in the poverty uh, threshold now some other measures of poverty also which is very frequently used in development research uh, i will just flag off uh, some of these uh, uh, indices without going to the details of these this may be followed up by students who would like to make use of these uh, uh, indices and there are plenty of materials available on them uh, for example the sen index uh, we have the fgt index the foster greer and thorbeck index so these are certain indices that helps us look up uh, dimensions of poverty through its incidence incid intensity and inequality between uh, poor people now there is also uh, uh, an issue with regard to when we are looking at the issue of poverty uh, we should also be concerned about the duration of poverty uh, because uh, it poverty is not something which is very static it is also a dynamic process 
So, people who are not poor today may enter into a state of poverty because of various reasons, because of various risk factors. Uh, it could be because of natural uh, factors, it could be because of um, uh, social factors, environmental factors and so on. Uh, people who are uh, poor today may not be uh, poor tomorrow uh, and therefore, it is important to look at the duration of poverty. So, without leaving behind the context of relative poverty and in order to incorporate the time dimension into the analysis, measures of persistent of uh, persistence of long term poverty are calculated. So, persistent or long term poverty measures deal with information over a number of years in order to calculate the number of poor people. Uh, so, what happens here is information is obtained from poor people over consecutive years and people are classified as poor or not in each of these years following relative poverty criteria. And the persistent poverty indicators aim to reflect structural poverty situations and they therefore do not consider people as poor who have circumstantially or momentarily fallen into poverty. There are two important concepts that are used in this context. Uh, one is referred to as uh, uh, chronic poverty and uh, acute poverty. So, basically we refer to long term and short term, uh, short term duration of poverty and usually you would see that uh, short term measures of poverty. Uh, occurs uh, mostly because of certain shocks as a risk, risk factor, could be because of a medical condition, could be because of envir en environmental concerns, could be because of natural calamities where families enter into a state of uh, poverty. Whereas, chronic uh, poverty may be because of long term structural, uh, structural uh, uh, features of the family, could be because of caste issues, uh, because of uh, lack of uh, assets in the form of land ownership and uh, so on. So, it is important to look at the duration of poverty and the reasons thereof uh, and uh, understanding the duration and reasons thereof also gives us uh, a foundation to build our notion of poverty as well and then develop our analysis based upon the notion that we have uh, developed. Let us now look at uh, the uses and analysis of poverty measures. Now, each of these different ways of perceiving and measuring poverty offers a very different perspective on the same phenomenon as I have just mentioned. So, for example, even though the isolated use of relative poverty measures provides data on percentage of people who are in worse monetary conditions than other citizens, it does not explain whether the most basic needs of these people considered to be poor are met or whether they feel excluded. Uh, and this is one of the problems of uh, the concept of relative poverty. Uh, via the joint use of incidence and intensity poverty measures, it is possible to have a large variety of situations from a society with a high percentage of poor people where all those who are poor are located very close to the threshold to another society where there is a small percentage of poor people who are, but who are located far from the poverty threshold. Now, just to make this point uh, much clearer, uh, so imagine a poverty threshold of let us say income. Uh, let us say in uh, uh, India we consider 12,000, this is a hypothetical situation where we consider 12,000 rupees per annum per family as some kind of a poverty threshold. So, all those families who are earning an annual income of rupees 12,000 or less will be considered as below poverty line and all those who are uh, uh, earning an annual income of more than rupees 12,000 per annum will be considered as above poverty line. Now, this is one aspect of the headcount ratio of poverty, but it is also important to see that when we are looking at the threshold, what is the proportion of people who are closer to the threshold, uh, both in terms of those who are below the poverty line and those who are above the poverty line. So, we may have a situation where there is 70 percent of the population above the pop, uh, poverty line, but of these 70 percent of the population, where are they located with respect to the threshold? Are these 70 percent located very closer to the threshold or are they located farther from the threshold? These are situations, uh, these are uh, uh, estimates that will help us give us a better sense of uh, where we are in terms of our uh, poverty analysis. Another of the key factors for analyzing poverty is to have available measures that take into consideration the inequality between poor people themselves. And all of these measures are essential for obtaining a comprehensive view of the phenomenon and their complementary use is fundamental in the carrying out of in-depth analysis on poverty. Uh, so, one thing that is very clear here is that it is not just the notion of poverty that is important along with looking at the incidence of poverty and the, and the distribution of poverty, 
uh, and the depth of poverty all of these uh, different measures need to be looked at together uh, to be able to come up with a clearer understanding of where we are in terms of uh, the in terms of the question that we are uh, looking at now let me end this lesson with uh, the uh, notion of multidimensional deprivation and multidimensional poverty index for a very long time in the history of development research uh, if we look uh, because there are measurement uh, issues surrounding uh, the notion of poverty uh, development economists have for a very long time uh, focused mostly on income and expenditure measures however with the coming in of the human development paradigm we have slowly started moving away from only income and expenditure measures to uh, to a gamut of uh, uh, to to to, a, to multiple indicators that go on to examine the situation of poverty we have also gone on to uh, gone on to a plane where we are trying to understand not just the levels of achievements in a society but also the levels of deprivation in a society so it is in this context that uh, the concept of multidimensional poverty and multidimensional uh, deprivation is used let us get introduced to some of the basic thoughts surrounding multidimensional poverty so this is basically a closely linked uh, um, uh, this this concept of multidimensional deprivation is closely linked to social exclusion uh, to deprivation or the lack of access to certain goods and services which is considered necessary for society whether it is basic or not uh, for example uh, when we are considering social exclusion uh, let me give you take an take a complex example of uh, gender and caste uh, we may be talking about a labor market where uh, so the female labor force is not allowed to participate by virtue of being uh, by f by the f by the fact of belonging to a certain gender similarly certain caste people may not be allowed to enter a certain market because of belonging to a certain caste so in this case there is a, a measure of social exclusion that has occurred because of gender and because of caste issues however when we talk in terms of relative poverty or absolute poverty these measures does not enter into our calculation and therefore it becomes important to look at multidimensional deprivation i may be a high income person uh, however i may may not be included in a certain uh, activity because uh, i belong to the female gender similarly i may be a relatively high income person however i may not be allowed to be included in a certain activity because i belong to a lower caste and so on and when all of these identities mix uh, when when you are a low caste as well as a um, as well as a person belonging to the female gender and so on then there are a number of multiple deprivations that one faces because of identity issues and uh, these does not these calculations or these concerns does not enter into the calculations of absolute and relative uh, poverty lines and therefore it is in this context that multidimensional poverty assumes a lot of importance so uh, poverty here is measured with non monetary variables and deprivation indicators using breakdowns of these indicators to construct poverty measures and this type of uh, multidimensional deprivation has also been called uh, severe poverty if you follow the human development reports the global human development the un human development reports that we have you will come across with a variety of measures that these reports have been churning out over the past two decades and uh, that has gone on to highly strengthen poverty analysis in this field and it is highly recommended that students of this course uh, make use of uh, the human development reports uh, analysis on uh, poverty and various indices surrounding multidimensional poverty and deprivation now what is the need for a multidimensional deprivation measure i have just mentioned however let us also look at some of these points uh, monetary poverty only shows a part of the phenomenon and assumes that households with uh, same income have similar standards of living uh, but individuals uh, have other kinds of resources that are not reflected in monetary poverty measures and which could be used to avoid poverty and to achieve an acceptable standard of living uh, studies that analyze the link between material deprivation and monetary poverty show two groups of poor people uh, obtained through monetary poverty measures and multidimensional deprivation measures were different as i was just pointing out one may not uh, appear in the list of income poverty uh, or income poor uh, sections of population however i may be multidimensionally deprived uh, 
because of having uh, because of facing other kinds of deprivations in uh, life. So, therefore, there is a need to obtain and use other analysis measures of deprivation and social exclusion that are different from monetary measures in order to complete the analysis and to give the most complete general view of the phenomenon uh, possible. Now, this is a multidimensional poverty index which has been taken from the United Nations uh, Human Development Report. Uh, the uh, Oxford Poverty Human Development Initiative and the UNDP for the first time came up with a multidimensional poverty index. Uh, so, here if you see there are uh, three dimensions of poverty and these are also the same three dimensions of poverty which we uh, make use of for calculating the human development index. Those of you are aware of the human development index will know that health, education and income. These are the three dimensions that we consider for uh, uh, calculation of the human development index. And in the human development index what we are essentially doing is we are measuring, we are calculating the levels of achievements of a country with respect to education, health uh, and uh, income. Whereas in multidimensional poverty we are calculating the deprivations faced by different countries with regard to these dimensions of health, education and living standard. And here yeah, the, the questions pertaining to uh, multidimensional poverty uh, uh, is based upon the perceptions of the how of the families themselves with regard to their deprivation. So, the questions are answered by the families themselves based on a number of field surveys carried out. Now, these three dimensions of health, education and living standard are further divided into 10 indicators. Health has two indicators nutrition and child mortality. So, nutrition within the family and child mortality are process indicators that go on to explain uh, also they could also be uh, outcome indicators which go on to explain the state of health. Education has two indicators years of schooling and school attendance and living standard has uh, uh, six indicators cooking fuel, improved sanitation, drinking water, electricity, flooring and assets. And uh, so, you would see that in terms of a measurement. Uh, the instead of uh, uh, focusing only on income or expenditure, focusing on all of these basic indicators uh, which, uh, which, uh, which uh, characterize basic needs of families and also goes on to and some achievements in each of these indicators can go on to inform various other long term achievements, intergenerational achievements in the families. And therefore, this uh, seems like a better measure than the absolute and relative measures of poverty. So, uh, in this class uh, uh, which is we try to look at some of the basic concepts surrounding uh, applications of uh, uh, development research methods with respect to poverty. As I was saying uh, poverty frequently uh, appears in uh, research pertaining to development uh, studies, development practice. However, there seems to be a lot of confusion surrounding the notion of poverty. And as a serious researcher of development uh, um, studies or development practices, it is, it, is, it is important that we first begin with a very clear notion of what is it that we are investigating when we are doing poverty studies. And therefore, it is important for us to have some clarity with regard to whether we are investigating absolute poverty, whether we are investigating relative poverty or whether we are coming up trying to come up with a subjective perception, subjective poverty analysis depending upon what the individuals themselves feel with regard to poverty. Now, once we have focused on our lens with regard to the notion of poverty, we then move on to understanding the different measures of poverty because measurement is the first step uh, that can go on to explain how to uh, understand uh, how to take our notion of poverty further by informing uh, uh, policy uh, framing and policy uh, interventions. Uh, we also it, it is in this context we also need to look at the incidence of poverty, the uh, intensity of poverty as well as the distribution of poverty and therefore, as I mentioned poverty and inequality studies usually go hand in hand. And uh, today we have also moved very far ahead in terms of poverty analysis because instead of focusing only on income and expenditure which earlier was considered to be the two of the most uh, uh, measurable uh, indicators or variables. Today we have different other indicators, surveys are being carried out to improve the databases uh, which can help us uh, come up with better indicators of uh, um, uh, better measures of poverty and therefore, we have started making use of multidimensional uh, poverty. So, uh, I hope that this lesson would uh, give you uh, a chance to uh, make use of these notions of poverty 
uh, within the development research uh, methods framework that we have been discussing so far. So, these are some of the literature that I have used for this lesson uh, and uh, for a comprehensive literature on the topics covered in this lecture, I also suggest that you go through the reference list of all the above cited papers. Uh, thank you so much and see you in the next class.